All right, guys, Francois here, SoCal Marine. I'm gonna quickly run you through um, how easy it is to actually work on these little two barrel carburetors. They're common on Merc cruisers, all the way from an inline four like this one up to the V8s. They're excellent carburetors. They get very good um, fuel consumption when they're dialed in right. Uh, they're great. I wouldn't really recommend ever replacing them. I've had 45 year old carburetors run excellently. All right, a few things to notice. This is a heat, uh, hot air choke. All right, it has a hot pipe that goes down there into that little hot air hole. It basically goes through the manifold. Um, and this one's broken off, so we got to fix on that. Some of them might be electric, so you might have a little uh, wire on there. This is just for the uh, vent. This is to draw out the gases. And this is the um, fuel line. Sometimes what you'll find is this is a very old style. Sometimes um, this nut will have a tendency to turn before this unscrews. So just hold it with a big, um, you know, adjustable wrench. Uh, and this one seems to be coming off real easy. Oh, there's a bit of fuel pressure. Oh, that's good. Oh, lovely. Let me just snug that back down for a second. I was not expecting that. I need to get a rag quick. All right, I've wrapped a rag around here. I got the fuel inlet off. It's got a rag there in case it carries on dripping. Um, this is broken on the hot air choke, so that's fine. Vents out. I got these uh, four corner nuts off. Um, mine are half inch. They might be a different size. They're pretty much um, very similar, but sometimes the throttle cable comes along the top of the motor. Uh, and they use the same style carburetor all the way into the 2000s, from the 60s, 70s, all the way up, four or five decades. Uh, the new 3.0 LXs use the same thing. I think Mercruiser actually bought the Rochester and rebranded it Mercarb and changed one little aspect right on the front here. I'd say the, the old Rochester and the new Mercarbs are 99% identical except for the uh, air, this gasket, which is kind of stupid. I don't know why they didn't just keep it. It's obviously a patent thing or something. So a lot of the newer ones will have more carbs, which is basically just a copy of this, all right? So I've got my nut coming off here. Always try and undo the least amount of nuts. Don't go and take the whole everything apart. Just undo as, as minimal possible um, to have the carb completely free. And it pretty much just lifts up like that. Uh, this is a customer's boat, it was running fine and he just let it sit for a very long time. And it's not running well and I'm suspecting the carburetor. Right, so we're going to go to the bench and I'll uh, show you how to open this and just clean it. Alright, I'm just going to cover some quick basics. So as I've mentioned, this is a hot air choke and this will basically just unscrew from the choke housing. I'll just take this to stop it from uh, flying around. And basically, um, you're going to have all these Phillips screws, sometimes they're Torx uh, along the top, and you can have a little bit of linkage on the side here, so just pay attention to that. Uh, you'll see there's like a little clip over here, that'll pop out. You can just use a little pick just to snap that guy out, and then the little rod will push out, um, and then you'll see behind this rod is another little flat. Um, so just go around the carburetor, take a note of um, you know, all the little linkages, take some pictures. I'm going to quickly uh, drain the fuel out of this and we'll be right back. All right, I've got all these screws out. It's just one more left over there um, because uh, it's just going to keep the body. So I've taken that little clip out over there. It's going to pop this arm out and it'll just swing around and come out. I'll just set that on one side. And now what you'll see is there's a big flat over here um, and you can that just unscrews and that'll allow this to kind of come free and then you can separate the um, the air on. Just give me one second. I forgot my flat. Okay. And that can be a little tight. Now it's very important that when you go back to tighten these that nothing gets bound. It's got to be completely loose when, when this screw is tightened. So, anyway, so I'll just get this out, and there's a tooth on here that allows this to slide out. 
you know you could probably just leave this on the wonderful thing about these carburetors is they're 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 so simple and easy to work on all right um, for some reason this is not running well i'm suspecting that there might be water in the fuel water tends to go sit at the bottom here and it just makes it idle terribly um, We'll see. I rebuilt this three years ago and it ran beautifully and the guy just let it sit for all that time and now wants to use the boat and of course nothing's been used the battery wasn't on a tender everything's dead so it's just all right so naturally the gaskets always tend to get stuck halfway but I guess we'll be putting a new kit in here I have to add, if you're in a pinch and you can get this gasket to come off in one piece and not rip too bad, I have had gaskets just continually work and work and work. You just don't want any breaks in them. That's the big no-no. People might say, well, of course, when we rebuild these, we put new gaskets in, but you could, you could take this apart and reuse the gasket if you can salvage it many, many times. And if you're in a pinch, you can copy this gasket. And we actually make a lot of our own gaskets. We have punch sets. Okay, and these are a little tricky to get out. Generally, the gasket should be on the top section. It tends to have to come out like so. All right, well, this carburetor is sparkling clean. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. So I'll just give it a clean out. Uh, the gasket came out perfectly in one piece um, everything still actually looks very good from three years ago um, so now there is a big uh, screen behind this nut uh, so you need to take that off clean the screen out it's like a little plastic mesh screen and a washer um, I'll show that later but um, you know a lot of the times these these things um, they're just so easy to deal with and there's different styles as well um, what you'll find is there's a little check ball at the bottom of this and that acts as a one-way valve so when it sucks up the ball kind of like lifts out and then when you go to plunge the accelerator jet the ball blocks the hole and it travels up the channels and it squirts out of these little um, the tops over here it squirts down that's called your accelerator jet and that's very important you'll have a bug if that's they tend to get very stuck sometimes you got to leave them overnight with PB blaster and take a fine pointed pick and scrape sometimes you get a lot of calcification down there from salt water so I'm just gonna pour this out and it's very important when you go to blow this out you could literally use a can of brake cleaner if it's really bad what we do is we blow it out with brake cleaner and we take a tiny Dremel brush and we literally clean the entire inside of this thing the um the cavity here with the dremel and this is after two and a half years maybe it's even three and a half still very clean so um you know depending how bad it is if yours is clean like this you could almost just blow through all the holes with brake cleaner anyways i'm going to pour this out and we'll be back all right so what i've done is um i've taken off the three screws that go in the top here um You'll notice that um, two of them are long and one is short on this model. So just pay attention. Sometimes you'll just have two depending on what year and model it is. And uh, this will just lift out. And I can actually see that this emulsion tube here has it's blocked at the bottom. Um, if I can get it to focus. See that it's blocked. So there's definitely some buildup. Uh, you can see here it's blocked. It's choky. So. And I managed to get my check ball out just by inverting it and working it a little. Um, so I'd say this carburetor was on the way to getting worse. Um, it's definitely still clean in the float area. I'm going to try and get this gasket off. You know, if you're putting a new kit in. I must be honest with you guys. A lot of times I've found that the older gasket sets are far superior to the stuff today. Today's stuff is very papery. Once you take it off, it generally tends to separate. Uh, it's very soft it's effective you know if you're in a pinch and you happen to have a gasket that stays behind and doesn't rip like this um, and it's not like blocking anything then it's it's perfectly fine to reuse it you know I've I've 
over the many years reused many many gaskets that came apart in good shape uh, if it's badly ripped or torn then it's not worth it you know a lot of you guys might be stuck on the lake and you know trying to fix something and it's it's completely I've done this many times on the ocean under some extreme situation so this one came out fine so you know it's reusable now what you'll notice here there's a little a little brass metal tab that goes across and it it's kind of staked in there you usually just tap this down and you know depending on how well it was staked by the previous um, person it, uh, it it will vary on how difficult it is to pry this out but usually you have to kind of wedge a little flat in there and you'll see that the little T T little thing comes out it sits on the top of the spring I'm just gonna put the spring down there look at this little guy you see and that's all it is it just kind of like holds a spring in there if you don't manage to get that thing staked down you'll see it has two little grooves down there um, you know you could you could just put that down there and put this on top of the screw if you're unable to stake it you know it's just really temporarily while you're putting that pot on but you can manage without it let me get this out again I do have some very very fine nose needle nose pliers that I tend to use for this a lot of the times these come in kits don't be surprised if they don't fit all right now there's usually a check ball down there as well and that acts as another one-way valve this one supposedly is stainless but look how rusted it is so that's definitely getting replaced um, so that's the bare bones of the carburetor um, so that's the power valve over there just make sure that people haven't damaged that over the years and these are your main jets they're usually so big um, that it's very rare that they will get blocked but I'm just going to take them out to demonstrate and um, don't be Chuck Norris on these when you tighten them and you go back in just kind of just kind of seat them lightly because uh, it's nothing worse than having a jet that someone really over tightened so when you go to do this one it's very important that you press down on the pin while you get your screwdriver in position if you don't you really stand a chance of wrecking that pin um, and uh, you know I really honestly find that a lot of the replacement kits today are so junk that you're just better off trying to use a lot of your original stuff um, okay so basically what you're gonna do is here this this one has the mixture screws are down here a lot of the newer carburetors you know they're kind of you know limited um, but anyways what we're gonna do is we're gonna you see I dremel these a long time ago you just want to make sure that the tip is nice and shiny um, I've had kits where the new screws don't even match the threads it's really appalling sometimes what you get but you can turn these little guys out and once you've got those out and everything else you know honestly this plate can come off as well uh, mine just has the single Phillips down here you can unscrew that and then you've got the two on the outside and screw those guys and you can just blow through every port with a brake cleaner you know invert it and repeat it and try and blow it through it from all different directions and you'll generally get a very clean base over there so onto the air horn over here this is the accelerator pump this is the guy that pretty much squirts the fuel down this has a, um, a little clip on the side sometimes it's a tooth which means you've got to expose that little flat in there and unscrew that and then this pulls out and you know it's all kind of like doable over here you'll see the float pin just pulls out like so float comes up there's the needle and uh, you know the rubber tip needles really take a long time to fail in my opinion it's the old brass ones that were notorious for wear but these rubber tip things you can usually just wipe them off like this and honestly I've seen very few of these actually leak um, and so when you go to do your um, float height you're pretty much gonna take the float like that you're gonna put it in the needle in the seat and have it all hooked up correctly you're gonna slide the pin in like so and you're pretty much gonna measure the float height now usually 
on these if you get the float kind of parallel with the body you're gonna be fine it's gonna run great you just don't want the float level to be like way off which would be something like that or completely sunken in now remember this is upside down so if this is low you're gonna have very little fuel in the float bolt section all right the more this moves in this direction the more fuel you're al allowing in before it hits the rubber stop on the needle there and shuts off the fuel and that's it honestly there's not much more to it blow it out clean it out um, it's pretty straightforward you just kind of reassemble in reverse to what I've done and blow it out and you know honestly a lot of the times these screws you know you can turn them in I tend to grease the threads a little just so that they stay adjustable I've had them get so rusty that you can't even adjust um, just make sure the tips are clean and one and three quarters turns out on each side so you back it all the way in till it seats lightly and you turn it out one and three quarter and you are almost guaranteed that it's going to run perfectly I'm not really going to cover the assembly because it's just a reversal of everything we've done um, you know you could just pretty much work your way backwards um, I'm going to show you what I use on these one second I just have a whole bunch of these at the shop it's pretty much I don't really know what it is but they're kind of like a sort of slightly serrated and these allow you to just kind of like get the muck out of these holes you know it lets you get in there and um, really clean these out it's very important that you do that because if you miss any of these holes or you're unable to get in there you know then you probably might just have to go in there so you pretty much find the thickest one that'll go all the way through some of the holes are angled and it's not going to work but you just want to get one of these and work it through and just try and clean out as much of this muck as you can and blow it off with brake cleaner and you're good all right uh, i'll see if i'm going to make an assembly video but for now that's pretty much it you can pop this thing back together set it up and uh, it should be good to go thanks for watching and uh, keep an eye out if i make the part two which is the assembly